everybody. Welcome back to the Trifles podcast. Hello, 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 hello. How are you guys doing? Great. Oh, Not bad. Just great. Been playing XCOM. It's nice oh, to be back playing that. I saw that. Man, I haven't played it in a long time and uh, like you almost wet my whistle, but it just, you know, sometimes like when you're in the middle of something else and you just like, ah, I can't start playing that. I can't invest all of my time into that game that I would love to invest more time into. Yeah. But it'll happen. Like I, I want to do a long war playthrough, but it's such a long like i know it's the clue is in the name but it's literally hundreds of hours to get through it's so many missions yeah and they're bringing out a long war of the chosen which is like a sequel that incorporates war of the chosen yeah and that's they said 200 to 300 hours for the playthrough that's as much time as i have in xcom there's that's gotta insane. be something new for xcom coming soon right the ending I hope of there's xcom, XCOM 2 3. was uh yeah like definitely pointed towards <clears throat> more xcom action there's probably more they could do with like DLC and stuff like that. Man, XCOM 2 has been such a great game. It like, has. It's one of my top they've done five. With it. Yeah, I love yeah, it. It's really good. But so, and there's Phoenix Point is coming out later this year, which is made oh, by yeah. Julian Gollop. So people call it an XCOM alike game. I, I just yeah. want to point something out. Julian Gollop practically invented this genre with Rebel Star Raiders back in the 80s on the Spectrum, okay? That game was very simple. Rebel Star Raiders 2 was much better. It was amazing. Like it, for its time, it was it was absolutely groundbreaking. And Laser Squad and games like that. That like it, it, these XCOM games should really be called Laser Squad style games. But of course, Laser Squad is a game that has been lost in time. People have forgotten about it. But it had turn based combat. And on the spectrum, you you had to aim with a, like a, a cursor. And so the bullets wouldn't travel in like up, down, left, right, or diagonals, they would actually travel on a, a vector right. and, and hit the target. It was, it was really amazing for the time. And it was just, it was really tense. It was one map. You started on the left, you were humans, and you had to get through this jungle area, across a river, to the dropship, and get on the dropship and escape. And if you, if you could, you needed to go into the alien hive, steal some eggs, and take them with you for extra points. Now, you could play it two-player. One person plays as the humans, one person plays as the aliens. The aliens were obviously based on the aliens from the movie Aliens, but for some reason they were equipped with bows and arrows and spears, which I don't understand. But it was it was a legendary game. It was so good. Me and my friend William just played it for hours and hours and hours and hours. So Julian Gollop, I, I'm looking forward to Phoenix Point because he's a legend. That doesn't mean anything. What right? do you mean? Like, well, inventing a franchise 30 years ago um and making it doesn't mean that you will still be able to make something uh, make something it, uh, like sometimes people only have one ever one original idea ever in their whole life do you know what i mean i'm just saying yeah I've, I've, look at steve jobs I, i'm waiting for mine and you know <laughs> one day hopefully i'll have that and you know it'll be it'll be huge um but but i, th I think that i have played the phoenix point i played it last week on stream with ben uh, got got a nice backer build. Um, it's actually looking pretty good. It's pretty cool. It's quite different. Stands out of it on its own from XCOM. It feels like XCOM. You know, you got a globe, you got a base, you got interceptors, you got dudes. You equip them, you send them out to kill aliens. They kill aliens. You bring the stuff back, research it, do autopsies. I like it's that. great. So what's your point? Well, uh, well, my point is that you know, just because Julia Gollop's attached to it doesn't mean it's going to be any good or not, though. Could be terrible still. Yeah. But I like, I like, I like, um, I respect him for making XCOM and founding it. But you know, I think the new XCOM games are amazing. Um, well, you know what, guys? As much as you like him, just imagine him taking a shit. That's what my grandma used to always say. Just say <laughs> about Wayne Gretzky, that, you think, right? He, yeah, you think that guy's great? Just imagine him taking a shit. I bet she doesn't seem so great now. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. I, it's imagining somebody taking shit really does sort of dispel the mystique around the person because you just realize he just takes shits just like I do. Do you know what? His are probably better than mine, though. My but, eldest daughter yesterday, we, they, my kids are talking about farting because they tease each other about farting a lot. And my eldest was teasing my youngest that when she's drifting off to sleep, she farts a lot because they share a room at the moment. Right. So she was uh, defending herself, but they were kind of laughing and stuff like that. And then I said to them, look, everybody farts, even the queen. And my eldest daughter's head sort of snapped around. She said, what? She goes, you told me that the queen didn't fart. And I said, when did I tell you this? And she said, you told me that they have to do a special test to see if you can become the queen. And if you fart, 
you're not allowed to become the queen. So the queen doesn't fart. And I was laughing because it sounds exactly like the kind of stuff I would have said just to wind her up. She still believed it. She'd believed it for years. Man. Like she genuinely thought that was the truth. And I realized the power of parenthood. Yeah. Oh man, it was so funny. Oh. I always imagine that the queen does fart a lot, but because she's not really a normal person, you know, like in the media and stuff, they always like, you know, like, like the Daily Mail and the Sun and all those like papers, they always try to make the royals seem like normal people right but they're they're, they're not they're they're just no. like they live on their own fucking planet like they're completely different and stuff so i always yeah. imagine that yeah the queen farts but she probably has like some weird like uh perversion that she thinks is totally normal uh but that if anybody else like found out about it they would be mortified right like she probably like fi- farts into a pipe that's like attached to like uh you know like jeeves's face or something <laughs> in like five rooms away or something like that you know what i mean like yeah. it's probably something but she probably thinks it's normal because like mama always did it or something yeah you know they I mean? always, we've so always done like, this i must find my farting pipe and then she has to like shuffle over to the pipe and fart and she just thinks that that's normal or whatever but like you know visitors and stuff like they have to like hide her away when when there's like guests over and stuff so like oh fuck no not the fart pipe again like jesus christ like how are we gonna break this to her you know what i mean like i i feel like all the royals have like uh isms like that maybe not as extreme as that you know what i mean but like you know in the paper they're always like oh oh william and kate are starting to show real signs of being parents no they're fucking not like they have fucking like 20 nannies like there's no fucking way they're doing anything other than just like putting on a tuxedo and going to fucking dinners every day or whatever they do you know what i mean like yeah that's that's what i think's making them fart all the fancy fucking all the fancy bro- yeah. dinners and shit fucking broccoli you know, they're probably for every meal like loads we'll of random fucking you, yeah. shit you know every day there's probably some weird fancy shit like oh you know yeah. today we're gonna eat like you know humongous giant rabbit steak or whatever it's like oh fucking hell the queen's like oh jesus christ what am i eating today yeah like some fucking some fucking weird vegetables have been gifted to me by you know someone some pacific island nation coming over and visiting yeah you know oh hello yeah i'll eat your weird thing oh god i know this is gonna give me the farts later i'm gonna have to fight in that pipe yeah jeeves is gonna love it yeah i reckon they do have all these weird traditional royal weird things that they 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 you don't realize they do yeah you see this whenever you go around like any old museum or house or like noble place and they're like you're yeah, so this is where the family would get together around the 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 shared whipping post yeah and they it's would always all whip eccentric each other. as fuck isn't it like, Be- like, the fuck? because they're not grounded in any sort of reality they're just so filthy fucking rich that they've just set themselves apart from everybody uh, and then isolated themselves into their manner and then just developed these weird fucking things like a kid would do with like a game or something. Right. Like if you leave a, a, a kid alone in a room for like 10 hours with like a battleship uh, you, that you're going to come out of that situation after 10 hours, that game isn't going to even look like battleship anymore. Right. They're just going right. to have invented all these fucking weird rules and shit like that around it. And like, there'll be some like pillows and hitting and stuff involved and like all sorts of crap. <laughs> it's the same with rich people, uh, in their yeah, mansions. You have to wear Do you guys ever wonder if we could go a hundred years into the future, what would games be like? Would they be the same? Because were we playing in 1919, similar kind of games to the ones we're playing now what were people doing as games probably that's what i wonder lots of dice stuff right like when did they invent dice it was a long time ago it had to have been when did they invent dice that's how it worked you want me to ask alexa i'm looking it up alexa i'm already on it when were dice invented the romans had dice Dice have been used since before recorded history and it's uncertain where they originated it's theorized that dice developed from the practice of fortune telling with the talus of hoofed animals, colloquially known as knuckle bones. The Egyptian game of wow. Snake was played All right, Alexa, with two sided throw sticks, which indicated the number of squares a player could move, and thus functioned as a form of dice. Wow, well, there yep. you go. Bet you couldn't Google that. Answer. I'm literally knuckle reading bones. it now. Oh. That- I'm reading exactly what she just said the stuff about knuckle bones and all the rest of it. All right. There was a 20 sided die. From Ptolemaic Egypt? They played yeah. Dungeons and Dragons back then? They had dragons back then. <laughs> and Dungeons. <laughs> and Dungeons, yeah. I think people who used dice were like the hardcore gamers of the time. Um, and then everybody else probably just threw rocks into like hoops and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, um, or, or like, you know. Fired in a pipe and then like took a turn sniffing yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know when cards yeah. would have been invented, but I think they would have been more like a casual, a casual gamer's go to i mean I, I think one of the things is with 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 cards and card games of course you, you would have had 
to have a consistency. So you would have had to have, for cards to be widespread, like the playing cards that we have, you'd need to have consistency of game. Yeah. Because you want to go, when you play poker in Texas, you want it to be the same as the poker that you play in London, barring whatever minor local changes there would be. Yeah. So I think maybe that required a bit more development in terms of communication and travel before that kind of stuff. But dice, I mean, you know, that's... It means, you know, you just have a dice. It has numbers on. There's no rules. You can just say, hey, let's roll a dice and the highest number wins. I, just keep doing that. Think, and then, yeah. you know, you could go from there. I think there's always been an element of gambling in games, though, even back then, right? Like, like I'd imagine that most people would play games with, like, wagers of some description, right? Like dice games or card yeah. games or, or anything like that. But, you know, like nowadays we have, like, you know, these big elaborate board games and stuff like that. Sure, you could still maybe do wagers on them or whatever, but yeah, I don't know. I, I guess part of the appeal, human nature. I think we want like an element of risk and gambling in a game, right? And like, well, yeah. I mean, uh, otherwise it's not a game. Like there, there are, there are, there are certainly there are games that don't involve that are pure skill, like chess and poker and stuff like that. Yeah, that people play for serious money and treat almost like a sport. Because I think any time that you arrive at a at a game where it's like we can actually play this competitively, the main thing that's missing. Is, is randomness. Like if you think about most of the sports, there is always a, a slight element of, of luck, if you like, but not in the same way that there is with say, dice. Because dice are so unpredictable in a way. Yeah. That you, you need to build your strategy around mitigating against that rather than sort of really relying on it. Um, I think, you know, if you think about something like, like uh, Scrabble, there's there's luck to there essentially where you might draw good tiles or bad tiles. Yeah, true. But uh, I well, don't there's, know. yeah, there's no fun in a game where it has a solution. I mean, that's just sort of a Rubik's cube, isn't it? Really, um, or whatever. Like you know, I mean, that's obviously a complex solution. But I, I think you're right. Like I, I read that playing cards have been around for fucking ages. Like I remember that I think I read I was reading something about Agincourt, um, like in the Middle Ages, and like. The, the troops were like playing cards then, that kind of era. Yeah, like, I mean, and, geez, and also, what else are they going to do? There's no TV. I think it was like yeah. I think it was just like a thing that was a substitute for money in a sense, the cards. But also, I think they were just something like Sip says, like just people were bored. Like being a soldier, even back then, I think was just high level boredom a lot of the time. Yeah. What do they call it? Like like, like overexcited boredom or something? That, that there's a there's a phrase they use to describe it, but it's like a lot a lot of doing nothing. A lot of being wait, like, something like trying that. to yeah. figure out ways to distract yourself, and I think like sitting around in a, you know, a communal area with with cards has been going for thousands of years. So yeah, by ancient now. China in nine AD, there was yeah. because this, this was a big thing. Printing technology, woodblock printing, means that you can have a consistency, so the cards are the same. So when you go play with someone from another town or, or whatever, and you're playing, you know, your deck of cards is recognizable to them as certain characters. I mean, if you think about a deck of cards now, yeah. the, the pictures of the king and the queen and all that are pretty much, unless it's the Oxcast brand uh, deck of cards, which is available. Oh, yeah, and then the you don't know who is who on them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <what laughs> then, <laughs> then it's different. <laughs> but th there needs to be some consistency. So printing presses and, and stuff like that obviously had to come in. Whereas a dice is just a lot easier, I think. That's why I think dice obviously came first. It is weird to think that we that there is so there is obviously a real drive in people to play games. Yeah, like it's a it's such a consistent thing. People get bored. They sit around and they think, well, look, we could just talk to each other for hours. Most people can't play a musical instrument. If I could play the guitar really well or or sing really well, I'd just do that all the time. Like that would be great. But because I can't do anything, I play games, and and it's just it fills my time. It entertains me. It gives it gives you a chance to to hang out with other people and and do something. Because otherwise, you're just sitting there and. I think night after night after night talking to people, yeah. would actually, you'd run out of shit to say. As we do often on this podcast, we only have to talk once a week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, it's because we, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like, man, we do not, nothing. not much happens in my life. I like, I, I don't really go anywhere. I don't really do anything. I don't change it up much. You know what I, I mean? mean like, because we don't talk about politics and stuff like that. Obviously, yeah. that's a changing thing. We I, don't really, politics, I don't really follow God. politics much to like enough to, to talk about them anyway. Like I know so little about politics. Like, it, like I only hear like major things, and even then, I, I never look into it. Like I know. The thing is, most people don't follow politics. People like yeah. to think they do that they follow it and they understand it. I, I follow it. I, I don't understand a we lot don't of it. Understand? It's shit. just just you just have to stand at the side and hope it all works out and. And, you know, that's pretty much the best we can do. But I don't even think about it. I find it's very stressful. I, I, think, about, I think about it like, um, I think about gaming and, the, the, well, I, I always I always think about it like the Sims bars, right? You have like these needs in, in your life and 
ever since you know we ask the same animals that we've been since the stone age you know you're always you're always hungry you need to have like you need to pee you've got like a, a bladder bar that gets slowly filled up and you need to like you know to go to the toilet sometimes you've got a hygiene bar you know you feel much better after you've had a shower like and then you've got like an energy bar you've got like a social bar you know and then you've got like a sexual kind of, desire some, bar yeah like exactly that sort of builds up and then you need to you know release that sometimes it's it's you've got all these like things you have to kind of keep in in balance and i think sometimes you know you want to read a book and just be a left alone but sometimes you want to fucking you know do something socializing with people and i think that doing that physically is something which we don't get so can so easily as as people in our in our world now with with video games and and kind of the, the, you know Netflix and you know mobile phones Pornhub it's so easy to kind that, of yeah. yeah like it's 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 tough to like get that social interaction i think board games are a great way to do it like i was talking to daft just this morning and he was like oh man i've been away and i really want to really got the itch to play a board game and i was like we should start doing board game nights again because we, we did them quite regularly you know, when fun. you were down sips we played a bunch of board games. We, yeah. when we went to a friend's fun. house um last weekend actually we played uh, a game called san francisco streetcar i think it's called okay which is like a tile placement game like i'm i'm re i remember i used to play a lot of board games because video games weren't very good when, when we were kids like they were okay and there were some great ones but they weren't great for multiplayer stuff and hanging out we used to play a lot of board games <laughs> It's great to me that even though video games have, have had a massive growth, board games have also come back in a big way. There's loads of board games. I think Settlers of Catan is a prime example of a game that I think is great. I played it at the weekend and I hadn't played it in years. It is such a fun game. Like it, it's really nice and relaxing. Catan, and, and, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's just a it's good game. Fine. Like I think I think it's fine to play it once. Like I, are these games are not. I, I can't play them over and over again, or else you go fucking insane. Like I, every time, like I, if I go to my nan's and I have to play Scrabble, I just like like grab my head and I'm like oh god you know, like Scrabble. Like, I can play Scrabble my Scrabble bar only needs to be refilled about once every six fucking months do you know what I mean and I can only play one game and it's completely <laughs> completely refilled you know what my, I do not need to play multiple games of Scrabble my wife's uh, my wife's grandmother said to her one time because uh, she loved Scrabble both both of my, my wife's uh, grand grandparents like the, they loved Scrabble and I remember one time she said to me, do you play Scrabble at home? And I said, oh, no, Maddie doesn't like it. And she she turned to her and said, if your husband wishes to play Scrabble, you must play Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, See, that's one of those queenly things. <laughs> I bet you that's exactly a thing that the queen has. Yeah, it's yeah. just so and she's funny. Like, the idea if that Philip wishes to play Scrabble, one must, one must. play Scrabble. Yeah. That's what a good wife yeah. does. And I'm thinking maybe in those days, you know, playing Scrabble was like code for something. And she was, you know, reading into it. Look, if your husband oh. wants to play Scrabble, you got to let him pocket play Scrabble. Scrabble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he can go to Pocket Scrabble if he wants to fucking Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Fucking, oh, my, fuck. uh, on the topic of Scrabble, but with uh, without any uh, innuendo, my uh, dad really likes Scrabble and always has. He's always played like Scrabble against like our neighbors and everything from like as far back as I can remember. But now with the internet and uh, and Facebook, he can play Scrabble with all sorts of people. And not only that, he has like, I'm not even joking, like a hundred games of Scrabble on the go at any one time. Wow. Like I, I, so I saw his iPad one time when he was over here. I was like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, I'm playing Scrabble. And in the sidebar, I'm not even joking. There was like a hundred open games with like my uncles and aunts and like old, older neighbors and friends and like he's just kept in contact with this like scrabble network throughout the years like despite moving a bunch of times and stuff oh and is that the app where you can just play and then you wait for them to yeah you do your turn down. and yeah. then you just wait and then like I've the game might playing that. last for like a year if no, like he's he's had a couple where he's like oh yeah this person just never did their next move it's like a year old <laughs> uh, oh, okay <laughs> Like, it's pretty I just I just find that pretty funny it's just like this graveyard of Scrabble games yeah it's like imagine like imagine if you did that in real life right and you had like a fucking like a sports hall filled with tables and like chess games yeah. and like all of your friends at a different chess table and some of them are just like you know fucking left to go on holiday for two weeks other people were there like it, like hanging on like t checking checking the app like every day to see if you've made your move yet 
you know, oh, that's crazy. And every once that's in a while, there's a table with somebody like hanging over it, like like in a, like a noose, like a hangman noose, dead. <laughs> and those are people that he's beaten at Scrabble in like some oh, weird shit. fucking alternate reality. Oh, I thought you meant they'd like looked at the Scrabble. After Scrabble like, is oh, a I very high this. stakes game. <laughs> it's like this room. God, that's morbid as fuck, isn't it? That must happen actually. Like people must realize on the app that they've lost, and then there's no point in carrying on. Yeah. You know, but they 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 don't want to press retire. They just just let it. Yeah. That's the other thing. That's the thing about people like i found on myself doing this too like if i find something that i'm not sure what to deal deal with or like it's awkward in some way i just won't respond rather than giving them like talk telling them straight you know it happens a lot in in life in like a lot of situations where someone comes to you and says something and you're kind of like i, I got a lot of emails that are like half hanging like a guy came to me and he's like oh you know i've come up with this board game idea and I was like oh yeah let me let me have some details and he sent me this huge long thing and about his board game that he designed it sounds really interesting blah blah, blah. he wrote all this stuff anyway and I've replied and I made a draft and I realized I'd never said to he sent me an email this morning again like just you know by the way did you get my email? blah 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 and I just I just sat I sat there this morning looking at this draft and just thought I, I don't know how to respond. And I, so I just didn't. I just I didn't respond again. It's just half written draft. And it's just going to stay there. Do you know what I mean? I feel a little bit bad about it, but not really because I can't. I don't know whether to. Sometimes I don't know whether taking action is worse and shutting down someone's idea or telling them it, it, like it is, you know, or like, you know, be like, oh, yeah, you should. We're not really interested. You should probably just. Here's, here's my advice. You should don't do this. I know what I want to say, but I kind of sometimes just don't want to do it. Is I get that, you. Like, yeah, I I get it a lot. Like I, a lot of the time, like sometimes a lack of response is is the default no, right? Because if I'm passionate about something, I'll reply and I'll be actively like, oh, oh yeah, definitely reply to this. And they're like, oh, coming up with ideas, like filling out the email thread. But then sometimes I'll just like go 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 cold and go silent. I think most people will realize that that means no. But sometimes you talk to people. And they don't get that no response means no. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. guess, yeah, um, but I guess some people just think like... You're busy. They just need like a yes or no sort of thing. So they'll just keep trying because sometimes, you know, people are just busy and they haven't replied for whatever reason. You just keep trying, I guess. Like, I can see I can see both sides. It's like, there's like unwritten rules, right? Like, for example, one of them is um, when you meet somebody new, okay... Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be of the opposite sex, but it can. But it usually, this usually is right. And at a certain point, you have to drop into conversation that you are you have a partner, for example, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, obviously, you guys have wedding rings, so it's it's easier. Yeah, I just okay. I just whip that bad boy off in before I start social <laughs> situations, though. <laughs> It's a thrill of the hunt, you know what I mean? Like, I like to still play the field. <laughs> you get up to your hotel room, you leave on the bedside table, when and you go down to the really, bar. When we get really, really close to hanky-panky, that's when I do the big reveal. Uh, awkward. Right. Yeah, no, I I'm wear just... it around my penis. Yeah, I wear that's it around yeah, my penis. me too. It's yeah. like, guys. So if it comes to the crunch, they're like, oh. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, yeah. I, I, have, I mean, yeah. the thing is, I, I, I haven't had any... I don't know if it's because because I'm obviously married, or because... I'm just so hideously unattractive. I, I haven't yeah. had a woman approach me in any way, yeah. shape, or form for me, such a long time. I, I would say that, for me in my whole life. So it's yeah. I mean, it's literally Mrs. F. Yeah. and like a handful of other women, and then they. I think the rest of them. The, the message, you know, news got out. This guy's hideous. Ignore him. He's uh, he's ugly. He's definitely going to go bald. Yeah. Probably a nerd. Don't don't go near him. And yeah, it went, they all got the memo, and that was it. I, no no women have ever hit on me since at any event I've ever been to any 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 time. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. I, right. The same. I've never like had a. Actually, I I have I have done, but it's always while I've been uh, either with my my wife or uh, not married or married to my wife. Uh, and like like a couple of like little things have happened where I've just been like nope and like walked away sort of thing you know like before like you know what i mean you don't want to like ever even like uh even chance it right like if somebody like is, is trying to talk to you and you know that there's like uh some like intent behind it or whatever so you're just like uh just i'll just like not put myself well, in that situation yeah. at all sort of thing well that is it like it's that being it's aware of that being awkward it's happened to be like a, a lot less since i've been older but when, certainly when i was younger it was a thing where like you know i'd be 
hanging out with some group of new new people that I'd met, and I'd be chatting to to a girl, and she'd you know just drop in, do but just she just drop into conversation like as as a sort of before before it got like before we sort of sort of bonded too much. I don't know that you know or like you meet someone at a Twitch party or whatever, you start chatting to them, and this happened at Gamescom. You know, I was chatting to this girl. And like at a certain point, um, she just sort of dropped in like, oh, yeah, me and my boyfriend do this. And it was kind of out of the blue. It was kind of not. It was almost like a very hard segue into it. Right. Yeah. Um, and it was like wasn't really didn't really fit as to part of the conversation. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I, I did like a hard left as well. And I was like, oh, yeah, me and me and my girlfriend do this thing as well. Oh, yeah, we really love to do this. You know, and it was it was kind of like both. And then we just carried on and had like a really nice chat after that, like for a while but it was it was kind of like i don't know like did you do you ever i i don't know how like those types of social weird like kind of interactions it's all because you don't want to be the one who says it first yeah. necessarily but you you kind of you don't want to lead someone on or whatever like ah, uh, it's a bit of a weird i don't know i just it just happened to me at gamescom and it was a bit weird yeah, i don't really uh socialize much so it like it's not a problem <laughs> for me <laughs> I just, um, you know, certainly I mean? not with people I don't know. Yeah, that's <sighs> another thing. I don't really talk to like if uh, some, like people I don't know, I'm very sort of like, uh, you know, surfacey. Like I like I like I'm more, like polite and stuff like that. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to like, I don't know. I'm I, like, I'm older. I don't need people. I don't need more people in my life. I've made my own people. I've got my crew and stuff like I don't I, I don't need new friends. Like, I don't need new. Oh, it's really anything. nice to meet new people, though. Uh, I had a really nice time chatting to some new people at Gamescom because they, they haven't heard all of your stories before. I, I find it exhausting, actually. Yeah, but you're, you're incredibly lazy, Sips. That's true, yeah. Fuck, I am super lazy. And you, they've got new they've got new insights and stuff. Into stuff. You could tell them about the bathtub, Sips. You know, just think. Like, there's this whole fertile ground of people who haven't heard the bathtub story. <laughs> and, you know, you could just regale them with that. True. You know, make their day. Like True. a raconteur you know, just... holding court. So, I found the bath plug simply wouldn't come out. Listen, to, listen to this, okay? And I hate to give, I hate to big up people for doing this because it's not very nice. But, okay, listen to this. I've been doing karaoke recently. I don't know if you guys have seen I've noticed. me yep. and Rabs yeah. doing uh, karaoke Twitch things, things it's been which has been amazing really I've, fun we've been and, uh, watching a lot so there's this uh, so at one point early on i was you know because you can do duets right and the way the duets yeah. work is you you record your side of a duet it gets posted and then anybody else can then uh do like part two of your duet so duet with you but it's not in real time like yours is pre-recorded then they have that as like a guide for the rest of their part of the song right and then those yeah. get mashed together posted up as one duet sort of thing it's really clever the, the whole system is fantastic so um i so i was I, I said early on i said fuck me it'd be so funny if like you posted a duet and then you saw that a new duet come up in your feed and you went to watch it and it was just some dude like totally not interested in twitch things he's just like eating his lunch like during his part i saw that video whatever, that was right? funny uh like it was just like a like a like a you know like offhand comment like oh that would be pretty funny right so this guy in my chat called thunder underscore five 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 um does that to me right i post a duet he's like and there's a whole bunch of new duets the next day i watch it and when his part comes to sing he just starts eating yogurt he's just like fucking staring into the camera like not singing any of his parts and like <laughs> eating fucking porridge or yogurt or some shit and it was really funny so like it became known as thundering somebody so like me and ravs would occasionally thunder each other on songs that we didn't know or whatever you know like ravs would just like go to bed during his parts or like I would just like leave the room during my parts and stuff and it became known as a thunder right and so these things have become more and more elaborate right like it, like anything they've evolved so it's evolved from uh thundering to like uh, like super thunders okay so this guy yesterday uh Dale K posts uh, a duet against one of my songs and it was rhythm as a dancer which was a troll pick anyway I did part two because there's like these long ass parts where there's no singing, right? So I picked part two because Ravs had to do the chorus bit, but in between the chorus, there's like 45 bars of just dance music and no singing. So you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs, right? So Dale K uh, does a duet on this song, right? And during those long 45 bar things, he fucking tells the bath plug story as his thunder. <laughs> Unfucking real. Like, and like, there's this big lead up. Like, so there I am. You know, I'm feeling pretty dirty and stuff. And 
So I decided to have a bat and like the whole fucking story, like all, like condensed into 45 bars of techno music with no say, fuck me. So, um, so, so Dale K and Thunder, if you're listening, thanks for the laughs, but you're both banned. I'm sorry. I, I've well, had enough. Yeah, it's fair. Get out. I think it's fair, isn't uh. it? I think it's fair. No, yeah, I think like I think you're justified in that band. Yeah. I, don't I love I love gonna... that side of it though. I love that that something like Twitch things exists and that you could have like these little fucking like things within it, like like almost like little memes or something in it, like that your community I mean, that, makes that or whatever. That to me is what I, I I hope that Twitch does more of that kind of stuff, that yeah. innovative, you know, because just give it a go. If it doesn't work out, nobody likes it. What have you really lost? It's not that much technology to set it up. Sure. It's like a video and then it plays back and yeah. you see it live and do yours. It's not, it's not, I mean, obviously work went into it. I'm not saying it didn't, but it, that's not <clears throat> impossible. So there could be more stuff like that. Yeah, there could be for sure. Uh, like it's, it's, it's awesome though. It's such a funny, it's just such a well thought out thing. And, you you know, you can tell that like the people behind it have like put a lot of like thought and effort into it. Man, you know, you know what? I, I actually uh, I, I want to talk about about streaming a tiny bit. It's funny we should talk about Twitch. Last night, uh, I got really angry playing CSGO right. with a guy I played. His name is Bob. I play games with him all the time. Yeah. And, Bob, Bob's, uh, Bob Sinney. Bob, Bob Skinny, yeah. Bob He's Skinny. He's a top lad. I make fun of him being a jury all the time and doing that stupid accent. Hey, Bob, even though he's I from Sutherland. Had, uh, yeah, I never had him pegged as a... Uh, uh, I, I didn't know where he was from, but I didn't... He's a Mackham, so he's from Sunderland. He's, right, he's a okay. really nice lad. Played games with him for years. I really got angry with him, and I, I feel like... I mean, first of all, I apologize. And any time I get angry with people, I apologize. I, I play games like Dota and CSGO. They're very intense, concentration-based games, and you're not really... I, I'm not myself when I'm playing those games. Like when I'm playing XCOM and I'm alone, way more chill because it's just me and the computer and I, I don't care if I lose. It's not that bad. It's, fu it's often the, it's funny and the story that emerges is, is funny and I like that. Sometimes when you're playing a single player game, I feel like the failure is part of the story. Whereas when I'm playing multiplayer games, I get very competitive right. and my brain switches and I stop act in the way I normally do. I, I, I don't find it relaxing and chill. I find it very stressful and uh, I sometimes get angry with people. And the other thing is, is when you're streaming, your failures are being watched by people, like having someone over your shoulder, but having rooms full of people over your shoulder all watching and when you mess up they're all laughing that's what it that's what it feels like sometimes as a streamer yeah now yeah. part of it is that that's the point and i i like that and when we when i mess up and and chat is going you know having having a laugh that's great that's the point of it but it's like tiny little attacks on your brain i think that's the only way i can explain it it's exactly what it is yeah it's just like little micro what are they called microaggressions, right but it's not aggressions it's just people laughing the way they would at anything I wouldn't. I wouldn't stream if I did. If I couldn't handle it, but my brain is obviously having trouble with it. It's, it's like this for everyone, right? Like I, I got angry with Ben a couple of times this week, and I looked back at it like yesterday, and I was like, oh my god, it's embarrassing. It's but, embarrassing. But it was because like there were, you know, he obviously was doing this thing. He was like, I'll save Lewis some time by doing this, and then because he didn't really like run any of it by me, it caused all of this extra work for me and all this extra drama for me, and he didn't realize any of that, and so I was like, oh, you know. Uh, not, I was uh, like, and I was also like very much a lot of it was just like extrapolating out possible, possible worries, you know, like when you have anxiety and things like this about things, often someone will get a little bit worried about something, but then they'll extrapolate that worry out to, oh, you know, so, oh, but, but obviously if we don't paint this, then what happens if it will get filled with mold and then all the insects will come and then the house will fall down and then we'll have to live in a sewer and then I'll get bitten by rats and then I'll get fucking rabies and then I'll be foaming at the mouth and then no one will want to kiss me. Do you know what I mean? Like it kind of runs down this mad line of like, well, you don't, that don't like, it's not, you know, like you don't worry about all that but that happens in your unconscious right yeah. and like often you can forgive people who are seem to be irrationally mad about something because they've got these all these unconscious anxieties that they don't even necessarily realize they're holding on to because they haven't had a chance to 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 digest that stuff and like just give it a bit of time and let that heal and like get put into boxes in your brain Anyway, sorry, P Flax, I've interrupted. No, him. not at all. Go on. So, so you, you and Bob fell out. You and Bob fell out. Yeah, I, I just, I just feel like part of it is, um, it, it's weird because from a, from a viewer's perspective, I find that when I'm watching 
Twitch streams, I fall into the same attitude that the viewers generally do. Uh, but when you're when you're doing it, you kind of it changes your mentality a little bit, even if you don't realize it, uh, especially depending on the game you're playing. So I, 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 I kind of think like I've been playing so much Dota and CS uh -huh. that it's actually just it's just too stressful to do it every day. So that's why I've started doing XCOM because uh, of the, you know, the panic attacks and stuff like that. <laughs> Much less stressful. XCOM is way less stressful. Well, the, the other <sighs> thing with XCOM as well is that it's a single player game. So you don't, you're not, it's, it's not as competitive. You know, you don't have other people that you might just start like screaming at because you're, you're mad or, or whatever. But the main so thing is time. For me, it's time. The reaction time in XCOM is as long as you want. Yeah. You can sit there and plan out your turn and think, and you can take your time and look at what everybody's got and plan everything. Yeah. And I, I like that. Whereas in no, I, I, Dota, I there's no time. You have no time. Yeah. As, as someone who's a parent, I'm sure you you definitely value games where you're not under the pressure of people constantly waiting on you. You know, I, I've uninstalled WoW Classic, and one of the main reasons I did was because I realised that I was playing with other people and they were constantly waiting on me. You right. know, like, it's like if, I, if I want to go and have a break for five minutes, I kind of have to, you know, say goodbye to someone and awkwardly let them go, or, like, I can't just stop because I've got all these people waiting for me to, like, go through this instance or whatever. Like, you know, I think when you play Dota, when you play, like, these multiplayer games that you sign up for an hour or whatever to, like, give your 100% of your attention to them... Yeah. Yeah. And you feel bad if you don't, you know, it's it's not as convenient as something which is pausable, you know, as, as almost every other game is really. But I think that that's partly why those games are so addicting, you know, like like WoW and, and Dota, like how, how they, they they hook you in because of that, that very, oh, let me just I just need to play it for another hour to finish off this. And then the more hours you've sunk in, the more you realize that you 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 want to come back and well, it, and it's what my mate put more time um, Ken into was it. he he used a term i hadn't heard before i'm sure other people have heard it it's like time to reward right i've never heard so of it so how much it's just like it's like an equation like time over reward so how much time before a reward on screen in the game the the example he was using was dota underlords the time to reward ratio is insane it's such a short amount of time between rewards. Right. So the reward might not be anything amazing, but when you finish the round and you see your units pop up in that moment, it's like opening a, a loot box or opening a mystery envelope or something. You don't know what's in there. Suddenly you can end up with a level three slark or whatever, or you know, a key unit you've been wanting appears. The, the, the time to reward is very short. And in World of Warcraft, it's the same. Every time you kill something, you open that little loop thing and there might be something cool in there yeah and you're leveling up and you're right. getting new skills i mean it's a classic gaming thing but i mean actually in world of warcraft it's interesting you say that because there is an example of you know you are trying to kill a boss for six hours right. you don't kill him or you finally do and then you have this incredible kind of you know, release, reward right? at the end like, wow, everyone, look at this. Yes, at least it, yeah. originally it was like that you know you used to bang yourself bang your head against it for a long time to try and get this thing and you eventually would i think some people are much much more susceptible to, yeah, to yeah. that high but it's human nature thing. It's, like these games are designed especially mobile games they're designed around yeah time to reward like candy crush yeah when my, i see my wife play that it's just constant flashing lights and wow aren't you amazing for pretty much every few swipes, so like there's animations. Some, some, and some stuff. of my friends don't play, don't like regular games because they they don't think that they have they they just don't like them and they only play games where they do get this high time to, time to reward kind of kind of thing. Actually, I've, I have noticed it before. Yeah, it's really it's crazy, it's really right? Interesting. But yeah, with Dota, the time to reward might be forty five minutes because the only real release in Dota is when the enemy fountain goes down. Because up until that point, you can lose. Yeah, like that's that's the stress of it. With CS:GO, it's a bit easier because you can win around even with pistols against full stack guys. You can win, so that you know the the reward is round by round. You're you're getting a win, and when you win, you get more money. You can get the guns you want, and all the rest of it. You pull up a sick shot on the next round, all right, you might die the next round, but in two minutes you'll be back on your feet and you can play again. So it's quite, it's faster time to reward to Dota, whereas Dota is very much, all right, you hit a creep, you get some money, there's a little reward there. But in the back of your mind, you know, you're pl playing this for 40, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe more. Yeah. And all that hard work might be for nothing because the loss is so crushing because it's so much time invested and so much concentration and teamwork and effort, and then you lose sometimes based on one error. So it's it's brutal. 
It's Dota, actually brutal. Dota is is one of those games where you can get these incredible highs, but uh, equally these incredible lows. Like I don't think I've ever felt more depressed playing a game in my life than at points. It's, it's playing incredibly Dota. harsh. It's yeah, brutal. It is brutal. Yeah, I mean, it is it is fun when you get into it. I think it's it. definitely a mirror, though. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have the highs without the lows. Yeah, no, That's exactly. The weird thing about it, but it does. Do, do, are the highs high enough to warrant having to go through the lows? Yes. And I think a lot of people think they are. They so, are. Yeah. Since we talked about gaming so much this podcast, let me just say quickly before we end, uh, man, Rust is fantastic. They've changed it a lot over the years, and uh, it's really good right now. Like, when, when was the last time you played it? Probably the last time we all played it. Like. So it was yeah, like two the years ago or something. Popularized it. Yeah, yeah. it's great now. <laughs> I, I've actually got a new computer coming uh, before the end of this month. It's a it's a beast. It's an absolute beast. I got overclockers to build it for me, and I got my friend JJ to design it. So it, it's like a proper monster computer. Nice. Because this one is like three and a half years old now, and it's starting to creak a little bit. Yeah. And I can't stream Rust. Uh, and I really want to, because like in terms of community games, when I play that with my Discord lads, those were some we still talk about and, and post memes from that time because it was such a good time. It was, like, yeah. It was just so much fun. Well, they've added like helicopters and hot air balloons and like. Oh, dude, the hot uh, air balloons are so hype. Electricity. I was I, I made yeah. uh, like an electricity cabinet yesterday. And like fucking hooked up lights and I, we got like a wind turbine and solar panels and shit like there's I, I like how they've just added a bunch of shit so that you don't have to necessarily just do rust stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we have a safe base. I could just sit in the base and like fucking organize shit and like, you know, like plan out like we got like uh, food planters in indoors, like under yeah. lights and stuff like fuck me. There's so much awesome stuff in it now. It's really good. It's really fun. Well, we were we had our own server and we've played on private servers that we've had and we've set it and all the rest of it and there is a problem and the problem is i would rather play on a puppy server yeah because there's nothing like the spread of skill that you get on the puppy servers there'll be a group of three or four lads that are like elite rust players god gamers at rust and taking them down with 30 poorly armed people that's some goon shit right there yeah. you know what i mean that yeah, is real is, yeah. goon shit <laughs> yeah so th that was like what we did we were the orcs and we would just rush people with 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 whatever we had until they ran out of bullets we'd be planting sleeping bags just so we could get back in the fight and everything it was crazy it was so much fun it's fucking awesome when everybody pulls together though and then you yeah. just have you're like okay we're ready to raid we got like 30 guys and you have like 20 chests filled with spears and like yeah. axes and shit and you like you know um, everybody's when you've got 30 people you can just chop down the yeah, 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 just, absolutely it's There's crazy too many people for them to shoot sort of thing but like, yeah it almost breaks the game and we, that's fun we're on a we're on a puppy server because it's populated so it's a lot more yeah. interesting there's you know there's there's always danger around every corner sort of thing and there's a really big base not far from us just across the lake from us that's all completely walled off but they've walled off an entire uh, npc area like this like supermarket so they just get free barrels and stuff all the time or whatever uh, and they've got like a recycler and and whatnot but um, they've got this huge helicopter like that fits like, I don't know, 10 people. And every once Jesus. in a while, you just see this helicopter like fly out of their base. And you're like, oh, fuck, I wonder where they're going. And then like maybe two minutes later, you just hear in the distance like, boom, 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 <laughs> boom. And I just think like, fuck, those guys are living the life. Like that is yeah. the greatest shit, isn't it? Like imagine being so organized with all your buds that you have like a fucking helicopter and you just go out on these little like missions and we stuff. We can do that. Yeah, like, we're we're sure. going to do that. Yeah. Fuck it. Once I get the new computer, we're going to do Rust again. And uh, build a helicopter. That's our plan. Yeah. Build a uh, helicopter. Yeah, that's, that's fucking great. We did deep sea diving last night. Like, oh, we're, the sea we're, diving is great. Yeah, fun. we're diving wrecks and stuff. We're just like we, we're collecting scrap so that we can tech up. We got like a pretty safe base. It's all honeycombed and metal and everything. So it's just like. We're just like every once in a while going out, grabbing blueprints, killing people that we see. Like uh, it's it's been great. We had a neighbor that we were like harassing like one night called Tony Labamba. <laughs> just uh, we ended up using like the you know those like those those shitty like uh, old pistols. You can you can shoot a door forty five times with it, a wooden door, and it'll knock it right. down. So we're just like standing there for five minutes shooting this guy's door, and him and his friend are inside like fuck you guys, fuck. 
you. Like, there's nothing they could do. And then, but they were trolling us the whole time. They had nothing. So like, we were like uh, desperate to get in. They're like, uh, fuck you guys. You'll never get in. And we got in and there was just like a chest with a stone in it. And that's it. Nice. <laughs> fuck. It was pretty funny. We, we had like, we had two crews. We had the day crew and the night crew was all the American guys that would log in and play until, so you'd wake up in the morning and they'd be like, oh, PFLAX, quickly, before I go, and they'd, they'd built some new tower or they'd acquired some new blueprint or something like that. And it was, it was, it was almost like you log in and, you know, wow, we, you guys have done all this cool stuff. So it, it gives people like in, in, a, in the community something to do when you're not streaming. Yeah. They're still playing Rust. Yeah, I know. It's great. It's really fun. Yeah, I, it's such a good game. We've had a good time with it. So shout out to Rust. Yeah. There you go. We talked a lot about stuff today. Thank you for listening. This is a bit of a short one, uh, but we'll be back next week yeah. uh, with more more podcasts yeah, yeah. until we'll then thank we'll you we'll be back next week we'll be back right, goodbye. Bye. goodbye goodbye goodbye